Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Stritz von K, a Tier 10 Swedish collector heavy tank. A vehicle that, when it was first introduced into the game, was absolutely insane. It featured super speed boost, allowing it to reach a top speed upwards of 53 kilometers per hour, but it also featured upwards of 3,500. 160 dpm the damage permitted got nerfed a lot went down about 300 it's now at 3280 but to be fair that's still a pretty solid chunk of damage output you can actually make it a little bit higher if you really wanted to by running double food which gives you an additional 42 at a total of 3325 however i don't really feel like that's necessary when you also have the ability to get enhanced sandbags and get a lot of hp at 2576 so the strict fun has great dpm it's got a pretty solid gun in terms of accuracy however it does fall apart in the penetration department only 310 mils is obviously not enough to cut through really anything when it comes to heavily armored vehicles i mean good luck penning a type 71 upper plate good luck penning an is7 in certain angles and especially a mouse angling properly or an e100 turret that's where this tank definitely comes to problems but the advantage is that you have a super low alpha at 350. This is good and bad. Low alpha damage means that in certain situations, you're going to be worse off because an auto loader might be able to either bonk you really quickly and back on the cover, or a high alpha vehicle may have the opportunity to just out trade you. And in that type of situation, yeah, you're kind of out of luck. But on the other hand of the scale, if you use this vehicle properly, even if you go up against a tank which has a lot of alpha like an E100 or even tank destroyers, you have a lot of DPM. And if you run this tank correctly, especially with adrenaline, you can easily out damage per minute even some of the higher DPM mediums. And that's great. It allows this tank to, even if you get shot quite hard, get out some big bumps. Plus it has mobility, it has 10 degrees of gun depression, and a turret that is good enough to get the job done. So, a normal tank that, you know, normally does 300 damage, or not 300, let's say 4 to 500 damage, well, I've already done 1,000 damage in this game, and if you were in any other type of heavy that had a higher alpha, you obviously would not have been able to get out as much damage as I have in the short amount of time unless you're an autoloader, but that's what's great about a vehicle like the Stritzvon. Unfortunately, as we can see, while the accuracy is alright, it's still not good enough, to get the job done on shooting at Yag Tiger. So we get a bounce from the U100, which is nice. I know the U100 can overmatch our roof if he aims properly, but that's not too much of an issue right now. We are aiming on this T95. We hatch him once, and we're gonna aim it again. Boom! Two hatches in a row. Got a little lucky that those hit, but I guess it made up for the very easy shots in the Yag Tiger that ended up missing. We've decided the U100. I'm gonna load a gold shell to guarantee the pen. However, the T95 does cut through our turret. Looks like he's running the stock gun. If he only rolls me for 400, we'll have to keep that in mind later. But, I mean, do you see how quickly we've picked up 2,000 damage? That's kind of insane. And it shows you just where this tank is incredibly dangerous. We shoot at the side of the Ag Tiger. Unfortunately, it hits the mountain instead of his vehicle. And at this point, I'm honestly just sick of shooting at the Ag Tiger. So I'm going to start dealing with this C100. We got one nice shell into his tank. The T95, well, trying to think of what I want to do. Could shoot the 95, but instead... We're going to shoot at the VK-72. We're at 2,600 damage now. We're going to aim it on the VK again, and bonk! Yes! Again, that lower alpha damage paired with a faster reload allows you to get out shells that you normally wouldn't have been able to. And we were able to get some good bonks there. So we got the T-95 in front of us. We're going to load a gold shell. We're going to pen him once. And again, great DPM here allows me to easily beat this T-95. So he's going to get one more shell into me, but doesn't really matter, because we're going to take all of his health away, finish him off we still have 1300 hp left and we've dealt 4000 damage at this point so we get to the side of the 100 we get a nice pendant to his vehicle and we're just gonna maneuver over here aim in another shell ah unfortunate it was just at the last second not a penetration so let's aim it on the cron we got one slap into the side 403 nice roll as well okay 4600 damage dealt we're gonna aim in an he on the back of the cron turret get a nice 417 shot and just like that an incredibly easy win 5080 damage dealt 
And, I mean, that just shows you how fast you can rack up damage in a vehicle like the Stritzvon. Even if I was in an E5 or, you know, a solid hull down heavy, I just wouldn't have been able to deal this much damage in such a short amount of time. So we're able to pick up a first class, obviously we finished top on the team, and this is just a great result in general to showcase where the Stritzvon feels amazing. And obviously, I always have a double helping of gameplay. So the second game we're going to be taking a look at here is even crazier than the first. This one brings us to Yamato Harbor. I actually had my Wi-Fi lag out mid-battle, and it helped me get a crazy damage number. So we are going to start off by making our way over towards the medium flank. The Stridsvon is not a heavy, and that's where people might play this vehicle wrong. People will look at it and they'll be like, oh, it's a heavy, it's got great DPM, it's got good mobility, but it doesn't have any armor. You should not be driving this tank against an E100, a mouse, a Type 71, an IS-7, unless you have a hull down position where you can actually use the decent turret armor. But if you're on flat ground, there is nothing you're going to be able to do against your opponents, especially ones that have higher alpha, which is literally every other tier 10 heavy. So yeah, I'm not going to go to heavy side on Yamato, that's a disaster. I'm going to go over towards the medium side and work my vehicle over here. Now because we're hauled down, I'm not too worried about this Badger. We get one shell into his tank, he bounces my mantlet, we get a second shell into his tank. And even though the Badger has more DPM than me, I know for a fact I outreload him, so I'm not even worried about him shooting me back. Just like that, a full health Badger is now 286 health and we've already been able to pick up 1000 damage. 10 degrees gun depression allows us to get a super easy panel right into the 57 heavy. This thing just racks up damage. I mean, again, it's it's an incredibly dangerous vehicle. It also features combat stabilization, which is the little green bar you can see kind of uh, turning yellow when I drive too fast. The mechanic of combat stabilization is all right. Also, this is where I lag out. I wanted to stop right here so I could get hauled down, so I could push off the mediums, especially because Flossie was in a bit of an awkward situation here. However, what happened is my Wi-Fi died at this point. I was trying to stop but it just keeps going. You can see, like, it just keeps going and going and going, and I drive right into the wall here. Thankfully, I only got shot once. I got really lucky. And this put me in a really good spot, because these mediums and the 57 Heavy, they don't really have much of a counter to me here. Like, yeah, the E50M does end up penning me a couple times, but I have a lot more health than an E50M. The max health that tank has is 1,900, where my tank has 2,600, which means I can easily take a shell or two from these vehicles, get some bonks back, and not even worry. We're already up to 2,200 damage, but the farming has just begun. The E50 gets a bonk into me, but that's all right, because we shoot his tune mate back for a much heftier roll of 438. 57 Heavy shows his turret. We get a nice 293. Again, do you see how just easily you're able to pump out shells over and over and over? Another Another shell to the enemy E50M, we reload again, we have one more second, and boom, E50M's dead, 3600 damage dealt. We have the T95 in the back, and will this hit? I doubt it, but we'll see if it penned. Dude had full health last time we saw him. We have the E50M, who was in front of me, but that's alright, we're just gonna go wide. I mean, the T95 can't shoot me if I get wide over here, and we should be pretty in the clear. So let's aim it on the E50M's lower plate, there you go. We trade, but again, we have a lot more health, so the trade is a lot worse for him than it is for me. We get a nice shell into the E50M turret, but ooh, the 57 cuts right through me. Alright, we're a little more careful, 57 bounces me, we're gonna pen him again. We did load gold, and there you go, another nice bounce. You can see this vehicle's turret actually gets pretty good bounces. It's not reliable, but it's definitely good enough that you will get at least, you know, 800 to 1,000 bounce to game when you're using it in a haul down position. So already we're up to 5,000. Did you see how fast we racked up damage? Because I sure didn't. We literally were at 2,000 just a minute ago, and now we're at 5,000. And it really does show where this tank just racks up the damage. We got a boss shot to own, I load an HE, and wow, what a high roll. 495 damage. That brought us up to 5,600. That's kind of insane. All that's left is the T95. I was hoping I could get a lot of HP off this guy. I was hoping he would just back up, and I was able to uh, HE him in the rear. However, that is not the case, and he actually YOLOs into the open. So, my dude may gets one shell out, and we get behind him. We get a nice shell into his vehicle. And, okay, he gets shot once, but that's not too much of an issue. We still got a pretty decent chunk off. There you go. 6,004 hundred damage. I mean, that's a lot of damage, especially for what was such a short 
battle. This tank is great, especially in the way Wargaming has designed the new matchmaker. It has enough DPM and pushing potential that I can easily make up for my team's deficit in certain situations. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be a tank that wins in every scenario. There are a lot of times when you drive this tank, especially on a map like, for example, Mines Hill, where if you just have a stronger heavy up against you, what are you going to do? Not much. So there are definitely situations where the Stritzvon feels great, and there are situations where it feels pretty mediocre at best. But, I mean, when you get results out like this, it does feel quite capable. I'm a huge fan of this tank. I think it looks amazing, and I'm glad Wargaming has left it in a pretty solid spot at its current state. Let me know what you guys think about this vehicle in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you think this tank is really good, or do you think it's kind of mid? I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.